Hello viewers and welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is uh, uh, sepsis. Uh, but before starting this topic I would like to request you to like, subscribe and uh, share these videos and uh, if you need more information uh, about any disease, any medical condition, uh, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com you know. And uh, uh, alternatively you can uh, click the link in the description area which is just below this uh, video you know uh, so once you click that uh, link it will uh, take you to a separate page um, uh, a new page uh, of my website you know so you can find the information there now I come to the topic what is sepsis you know you know sepsis is uh, a life-threatening uh, condition you know or illness you know uh, and by your body's response to an infection you know and uh, your immune system protects uh, uh, your body from many illnesses and infections you know but uh, it's also possible for it to go into overdrive in response to an infection you know and the sepsis develops uh, when the chemicals in the immune system releases into the bloodstream uh, to fight an infection uh, uh, cause the inflammation throughout the entire body instead you know so the severe cases of the sepsis can lead to the septic shock uh, which is a, a medical emergency you know and there are more than one million cases of uh, sepsis uh, each year you know and this type of infection kills more than um, like uh, maybe quarter million Americans every year you know and the number is much higher in the rest of the world you know next thing is what are the symptoms uh, of the sepsis you know you know there are three stages of sepsis uh, sepsis, severe sepsis, and septic shock. So these are the three stages. Sepsis can happen uh, when you are still in hospital, recovering from the procedure. You know. uh, but uh, this is not always the case. Um, it's important to seek the immediate medical attention uh, if you have any of the symptoms like. Uh, in case of the sepsis, you know, uh, uh, the symptoms may include like uh, fever, which is uh, more than 104 degree Fahrenheit, you know, uh, your uh, heart rate uh, higher than 90 beats per minute, uh, breathing rate higher than 20 beats per minute, you know, and uh, uh, probable are the confirmed infection. So in that case, uh, this is the symptoms of the uh, sepsis, you know. And uh, you must have at least two of these symptoms before the doctor can diagnose the sepsis, you know. The next thing is the severe sepsis. So in case of the severe sepsis, uh, occurs when uh, there's organ failure. And you must have one of the uh, signs to be diagnosed with the severe infection, which I'm going to tell you next. Number one, uh, it... Uh, the patches of the discolored skin okay a decreased urination changes in the mental disability breathing problems you know low platelet count okay so low platelet counts is mean that low clotting cells you know unconsciousness are the chills due to the fall in the body temperature extreme weakness okay and the abnormal heart functions so if any of these plus infections you know so this is the, the severe sepsis you know uh, now the next thing is what's the septic shock? What are the symptoms of the septic shock which is the most serious and life-threatening, you know? Now the symptoms of the septic shock include the symptoms of the severe sepsis uh, plus a very and extremely low blood pressure. So drop in the blood pressure plus the symptoms of the uh, severe sepsis. So it's septic shock. Okay. Now 
you know the sepsis is a potentially a life-threatening situation and uh, the illness ranges from mild to severe you know and there is a high rate of recovery in mild cases but a septic shock has about 50 percent mortality rate you know which is quite high very, very high you know and uh, uh, having a case of the severe sepsis increases the risk of the uh, future infections you know and uh, uh, the severe sepsis are the septic shock um, it can uh, uh, cause the complications like uh, small blood clots can form throughout your body you know and these clots uh, like block the flow of the blood and the oxygen to the vital organs and the other parts of the body you know and uh, this increases the risk of organ failure and the tissue death, which is known as gangrene. Gangrene, you know. Next thing is, what are the causes? Well, any infection can trigger the sepsis, you know. And uh, but there are certain types of infections that are more likely to uh, cause the sepsis, you know. And they may include like the pneumonia, or they may include like the kidney infections, even bloodstream infections, you know and the abdominal infection. So these are the most common uh, kind of infections which can cause the sepsis, you know, they can trigger the sepsis, you know. And uh, uh, the number of sepsis uh, uh, cases worldwide increase every year, you know. And in fact, uh, uh, you know, the sepsis ca uh, causes more uh, uh, deaths than uh, uh, the prostate cancer, uh, breast cancer and the AIDS combined together, you know, so this is a big killer, you know, and uh, the possible reasons uh, for the increase uh, may include like the uh, aging population because uh, the sepsis is more common in the senior citizens, you know, and increase in the antibiotic resistance and the increase in the number of people with the illnesses uh, that weaken the immune system, you know, so these are the, um, the three major causes of uh, uh, like uh, uh, sepsis, you know. Now, they say who is at risk? Well, the, some people have the high risk of infection. Uh, anyone can get the sepsis, but the people who are at risk, those may include like, uh, number one are the young children and the seniors, okay? Uh, people with a weak immune system and the people uh, being treated in an uh, like ICUs, an intensive care uh, unit, you know. And the people exposed to the invasive devices such as intravenous catheters and the breathing tubes, you know. So they are uh, at high risk, you know, of uh, getting uh, these uh, uh, infections, you know. Now, the next thing is, uh, what about the, the newborn babies and the uh, sepsis, you know. Well, the neonate, which is known as neonatal sepsis, you know. And the neonatal sepsis is when your baby gets blood infection um, within the first month of the life, you know. And the neonatal sepsis is classified based on the timing of, of the infection. And uh, according to whether the infection was uh, contracted during the that birth process, which means the early onset, or after the birth, which means the late onset, you know. And this helps the doctor to decide what kind of a treatment uh, is more uh, uh, appropriate, you know. Low birth weight and uh, premature uh, birth, you know, they are, uh, those babies are uh, more susceptible uh, to the late onset because uh, their immune systems are immature, you know. And while the symptoms can uh, uh, be like uh, subtle, you know, and uh, non-specific, uh, and uh, some signs may include like uh, 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 like listlessness, you know, and not breathing well, or uh, a temporary stopping of breathing, which is known as uh, apnea, you know, fever, or uh, um, ab like uh, the poor skin, uh, uh, like uh, uh, circulation with the uh, cool extremities, you know, and like hands or feet, they are cold, you know, and uh, abdominal swelling, uh, distension, you know vomiting, diarrhea, seizures, and uh, like uh, yellowing of the skin, and the whites of the eyes, you know, and the problems in the feeding, you know, so these are the common uh, signs, you know. And, uh, you know, the infant or the neonatal sepsis uh, is still a leading cause of infant death, you know, uh, but with the early diagnosis and the proper treatment, 
the baby will recover completely and have no other problems you know and with the maternal universal screening and the proper kind of a, um, a neonatal testing the risk of neonatal sepsis uh, has uh, decreased significantly in the recent uh, years you know now the sepsis in the seniors are the old age peoples you know is the the next uh, uh, section you know you know uh, you know our uh, immune system uh, weaks with the age you know and the seniors can be at higher risk of sepsis and the people over the age of 65 uh, uh, there were the percentage of the sepsis was 70 percent of the patients were over the age of 65 you know uh, in uh, there was the uh, statistics of uh, 2006 uh, uh, or seven, I think and uh, the chronic illnesses such as diabetes or the kidney diseases or the cancer high blood pressure high cholesterol HIV AIDS so they are commonly found in those who have the sepsis you know and the most common types of infections to cause uh, the sepsis uh, include like pneumonia and uh, genital urinary uh, like uh, urinary tract infections you know and uh, other infections uh, uh, can uh, come with the infected skin due to like pressure sores or uh, uh, skin tearing so these are the other common uh, uh, like uh, 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 infections you know which can cause the sepsis you know in the senior citizens uh, it's not contagious uh, but the pathogens that cause the original infection can lead to sepsis uh, can be contagious you know and the sepsis spread uh, within a person's body from the original source of infection to the other organs uh, through the bloodstream you know uh, if you have the symptoms uh, your doctor will test uh, uh, will make a diagnosis and determine the severity by like the the first test is the blood test you know and uh, you will be checked uh, for the complications like uh, infection or uh, clotting problems or uh, like abnormal liver function tests you know or the abnormal kidney tests or decreased amount of oxygen in the blood you know or um, uh, like electrolyte imbalance you know and depending on the symptoms and the results of the blood tests you know uh, your doctor may order further tests like a urine test or maybe a wound secretion test or culture test you know or mucus secretion test you know and just to identify the uh, uh, culprit you know the bacteria which is causing that uh, infection you know and then uh, uh, maybe to find the most appropriate uh, uh, antibiotic which is most effective in that uh, uh, particular bacteria you know and then your doctor may advise like a CT scan or um, maybe uh, like uh, x-rays and ultrasounds you know uh, to view the infection in the gallbladder or the ovaries and the MRI can identify the soft tissue infections as well you know so x-rays CT scans and uh, MRI are the imaging tests which are helpful to find the right um, site of infection you know now there are two tools uh, doctors use to determine the severity of the condition you know and one is uh, like systemic inflammatory response syndrome you know SIRS and uh, is defined when you meet two or more of the uh, symptoms like uh, fever more than 100 uh, or less than 36 you know the heart rate more than 90 beats per minute and the respiratory rate more than 20 beats per minute okay uh, are the are like arterial carbon dioxide tension uh, which is known as PECO you know two less than 32 m mmhg you know and uh, abnormal white blood cell count you know and uh, another tool is uh, like uh, a quick uh, sequential organ failure assessment so it uses the results of uh, uh, the uh, three criteria number one is like uh, low blood pressure reading number two is the high respiratory rate which is greater than 22 beats per minute you know and the uh, Glasgow comma scale score less than uh, 15 so you know the Glasgow uh, comma scale is uh, 
uh, which is used to uh, determine uh, like uh, the level of your consciousness you know and uh, if that is positive you know if these tests are of, of criteria are positive it's determined if two or more of the bowel measurement uh, there's a cold or uh, abnormal you know and the, some physicians prefer using um, the second uh, like um, the quick uh, sequential organ failure assessment you know because uh, uh, it does not require the lab tests you know and the results uh, of the either of these uh, will help to uh, like uh, to determine the care you know and now next thing is uh, treatment you know uh, sepsis can uh, quickly progress to septic shock so and death you know if it's left on treated so it's very important uh, the doctors use the number of medications to treat the sepsis including like uh, uh, antibiotics uh, via the intravenous you know to fight the infection number two the vasoactive medications to increase the blood pressure you know and the insulin to stabilize the blood sugar corticosteroids to reduce inflammation and the painkillers so these are the uh, emergency measurements which are taken by the doctors and the severe sepsis um, may also require large amounts of IV fluids and uh, maybe respirator for the breathing may be required you know and the dialysis may be necessary if the kidneys are affected or uh, they fail you know and uh, uh, to clean the blood you know and uh, you know in some cases the surgery may be needed uh, where you need to remove the source of infection like uh, um, uh, draining of uh, pus filled abscesses and removing the infected tissues you know, in case of gangrene etc you know uh, your recovery from the sepsis depends on the severity of your condition and uh, any pre-existing conditions which might uh, have you know and many people who survive will recover completely uh, but others uh, will report like uh, uh, long-lasting effects you know and uh, uh, it can take up to 18 months uh, before the survivors uh, like start to feel like their normal lives you know and the sepsis uh, alliance says that uh, around 50 percent of the sepsis survivors will uh, uh, deal with the post sepsis syndrome which is known as PSS you know and uh, this condition includes the long term effects like uh, uh, damaged organs uh, insomnia nightmares uh, lowered self esteem low confidence you know and uh, lowered cognitive functioning and poor concentration you know. and uh, severe cases uh, after sepsis can lead to death and uh, uh, it's been estimated that between 28 and the 58 percent of the uh, these people die who suffer from the severe or the septic shock you know uh, there are certain ways that uh, you can prevent the spread of infection and you can reduce the risk of uh, like developing the sepsis and they may include like staying uh, up to date on your vaccine, you know. uh, protecting good uh, uh, your, uh, I mean, good hygiene, you know, so you can say, that. and getting immediate care if you develop the sepsis. Uh, so don't delay, so time matters, you know. Uh, now, outlook it's important to remember that sepsis is a medical emergency, you know, and every minute and every hour counts, you know. The earlier the treatment starts, the better the prognosis. And once it develops to the severe sepsis or the septic shock, then the uh, outlook, the prognosis uh, chances, they drop, you know. And uh, if uh, uh, severe sepsis or the uh, septic shock develops at that stage with the proper treatment, the survival rate is about uh, 50%. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesintreatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe this channel for more information every day. Thank you and goodbye.